nine months into a, a new season and um you know he's broken this record and it's not just breaking the record it's it's breaking the record and the games that he's broken it in how do you rate City's chances of getting one over Real Madrid I think City will be favoured to me I, I don't um I don't take any of the Real Madrid results in the league um well I take every Real Madrid, the, the stats you just mentioned with a huge pinch of salt um since Madrid got beaten by by a uh, since Real Madrid got beaten by Barcelona in their league game late on with Dan, the, the Frank Hesse goal to go 12 points clear, they effectively down tools in the league. They've played a number of different players in different positions. They haven't had the strongest team out in the league because they've been saving the players for the Champions League games against Chelsea. And likewise, even the Sociedad game the other day, some, some players made, other players didn't because they're saving the players for Saturday against Osasuna in the Copa del Rey and... Um, and the Manchester City get. Saying that, I think Manchester City, of course, they've got more things to go for, aim, uh, including the, the Premier League, so they have to be strong all the time. But the first leg being in the Bernabeu, which is different from last year, um, you know, Man City, I've added Erling Haaland, who's had, a, who's had a really good season. You know, they will be certainly favoured going into uh, this, t- the, the, this particular game. And then whoever wins this will be huge favourites for the final. You've played for both of these clubs. You've also played for another European giant, Liverpool. Does league form matter in European competition or does it go completely out the window? Like you like you've been to that. Yeah, I think it goes completely out the window. I think it helps if you're, you know, if you're the if you're playing really well, you're near the top, I think. You know. But um within the semi finals, you know, you're not a rubbish team if you've got to the semi finals. Um you know, they've beaten Liverpool again, they've beaten Chelsea again, you know, City have, have done what they need. Do and, and and now they meet and um, you know these teams are going to be and have been you know at the top of the tree for a number of years and um, you know there's there's a good chance they'll meet again in the future because they're good and they keep on investing and reinvesting and they, you know they'll want to stay at the at the top of European football for a while so um, you know it it should be it should be a great encounter um, but you know Madrid have just been taken over by Atleti for into into second into third. And there's reasons why, you know, so if you were talking about a team that have just gone top of the Premier League against the team that was second in, in La Liga, you know, you're talking about, you know, you're splitting airs really. It's um, the two teams are in decent enough form in, in the cup competitions and um, it'll be quite close. Where do you think Real Madrid's weaknesses lie and how can City specifically exploit them? Well, I don't, Madrid don't have many weaknesses. I think they give up chances, I think, but they've got an incredible goalkeeper. Um... Teams that like to go forward and score goals normally concede chances, so I have no real issue with that. You know, the fact that they beat Liverpool 5-2 at Anfield, you know, that's an incredible result. And then they go to Chelsea and keep them quiet. I know Chelsea are not playing well, of course they're not. But they kept them quiet for two games. You know, so you'd say that there's not a lot of um, of uh, weaknesses. You know, they went and won the trophy after everything they did last year. So there's certainly not a lot there, but they're just coming up against an exception team, aren't they? And they're going to have to keep Hall and quiet, and City are going to have to keep Benzema and Vinicius quiet. And Hall and whoever plays Hall and De Bruyne need to be needs to be kept under wraps because if they give them the freedom of the park, they'll make chances and they'll score goals. But that goes to both teams really. Um, you can't afford to make mistakes. You can't. You have to be on. You know, you have to be on the metal all the time. You know, City last year were two goals up on a number of occasions at home. And maybe instead of shutting up shop, they kept on going forward and Madrid call up them and, and, and then the, the second the second tie became uh, became a lot closer. So I think they'll learn from from past their uh, past games and past um, performances and um and they'll know how to how to come across this Madrid's team. You know, they'll know the sitting players will know that they're favourites going into this tie. Of course they will. But they'll have to do something different to what they did last year. Because um for some reason or other they, they got knocked out by them. City have come so close to winning the Champions League on a number of occasions. They've narrowly lost out Chelsea in the final, but on all those occasions, they didn't have Erling Haaland up front. I mean, he's already broken the Premier League goal-scoring record. Have you ever seen a new sign-in have this sort of impact in, in their debut season? Um, well, I think the answer's no, really, because... You know, we're talking about a forward here. You know, sometimes defenders can come in and have a great season, but we, we couldn't care less about them. But as soon as somebody scores 35 goals in 31 games, we instantly go, wow, you know, when he breaks a record that's been held for 20-odd years from Alan and Andy, 
you know, we instantly say, oh my words, because that's how we view goal scorers at this moment in time. Whether it's right or wrong, it's probably wrong, really. But because goal scorers get the glory for scoring the goals, we, we, we hype them up a little bit more. Um, but, you know, nine months into a, a new season and, um, you know, we've broken this record. And it's not just breaking the record, it's it's breaking the record in the games that he's broken it in. You know, where he, he's had a, he has really had an exceptional season. And the fact that, the fact that other players around Europe, and I'm trying to think, you know, maybe Napoli, but really Ossiman or Galatxelia or, but, you know, Bayern Munich, you know, I'm thinking about champions, PSG, you know, there isn't a lot of standout players this year when we're thinking globally, when we're thinking, you know, Ballon d'Or contenders, when we're thinking. So he's certainly, after this year, he's had, he's, put, he's elevated himself already, and he's elevated himself in the eyes of European followers. So, um, you know, they just need to complete the business, really. That's all it is. That's all That's all anybody is. You know, you're talking about getting to getting to the semi-final stage, which is amazing. Of course it is, and scoring all these goals. But it doesn't mean a jot if Benzema outscores you and Real Madrid win the, win the Champions League, because Benzema hasn't played as many games this year. He's chasing down Lewandowski for the golden boots in, um, in Spain. So you have to do it, and you have to do it every single year, year in, year out for these big teams. Based on what you've seen of Haaland so far, how do you rate him against the likes of Alan Shearer, Thierry Henry, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Andy Cole? Well, I don't really, because he's only had one year. I mean, he's had an exceptional year. But Alan Shearer has had, had 10 exceptional years, didn't he? And so did so did Ruud, uh, you know, going through the players. And, you know, you know, Man City, when he joined Man City, they were an amazing team who were favourites for every single trophy they, they took part in. So I think it's easier for him joining Manchester City and scoring lower goals than he was if he joins Chelsea or he joins another team. You know, City played to his strengths. And I think if, um, you know, I think whoever plays up front for Manchester City, if you know, now goal scorer will score goals because the service to him is, you know, is phenomenal. When you've got Bernardo Silva or Kevin De Bruyne or Riyad Mahrez or Phil Bowden, Jack Grealish putting them on a plate for you. He should score those goals, but that's not to take away from him. I think he's had a wonderful season, but I wouldn't necessarily compare him with Alan Shearer, who's got 260 goals, or even Harry Kane chasing him down, or Wayne Rooney. I wouldn't compare him with them. Um, and that's not being disparaging. It's just being about longevity. That's all it is. You know, in 10 years' time, I might be sitting here going, he's way better than them all. But at this moment, nine months into a Premier League career, I can't go overboard for him when he's, you know, he's had a great season. I think he's a wonderful player. And I thought he was a wonderful player when he was at Dortmund. And I knew he'd scored a load of goals when he joined Man City. I think everybody knew he'd scored a load of goals at Man City. He just needs to do it year on year on year on year and then win, win, win. And that's when he'll be considered a legend at Manchester City. But if he clears off next year, you know, people would, you know, wouldn't call him a legend. They'd just say, it was, you know, he had a brilliant year, didn't they? So he just needs to stay and sustain and sustain. And he, he probably will. It looks like Real Madrid have picked City to the signing of Jude Bellingham, which Liverpool were also in the running for. Um, what are your thoughts on on that rumoured move from Bellingham to to Real? Uh, not a surprise. Um, uh, if it all goes through, that is, I don't think you know Real Madrid will do the signing until the summer. You know, I, I think out of respect for Jude because he's um, he's got a Bundesliga tight and he wants to win. And likewise, Madrid, you know, are playing the Copa del Rey final and then the Champions League. So I don't think anything will get done to the summer. And if he joins Real Madrid, so be it. Um, I don't think he was ever really going to join Liverpool as much as he may have wanted to because I just think the finances would have been too much. I don't know whether Manchester City were really in form with the, with the midfielders they've got. Maybe so, I'm not entirely sure. But if he does go to Real Madrid, I think it'll be a wonderful fit for him. It's a fantastic uh, club. It's a fantastic city. Um, he'll get treated like a god. He's going to play in the, you know, this incredible futuristic new stadium. I mean, what? There's, as far as I'm concerned, there's, there's no negatives negatives for Jude if he if he makes that uh, choice. You mentioned that in your uh, view, Man City are favourites, but obviously they they're relative novices in European football, whereas Real are, are the most successful club in European history. How much does that psychological advantage tip the balance back in Real Madrid's favour? I don't think it tips it back at all, to be very honest, mate. You know, City got knocked out last year in the, in the semis. You know, of course, they got in the final against Chelsea. So 
they're inexperienced in lifting the trophy. They're not inexperienced in getting there or lifting trophies per se. They're just inexperienced in lifting this one bloody trophy. But they'll get there in the end. But they are coming up against a team who know how to who know how to lift this trophy. They've been there before. They never panic when they when they a goal down or two goals down. It's not a big thing. They continue to play. They're big players and they've got some superstars in the team. Normally, they find a way to get themselves back into the game. So that's what it is. I mean, City are favourites, but you know they have to beat this team that is incredibly dominant in this tournament and incredibly dominant in recent years. You know, when you're talking about players in that team, you've won five European cups. It's phenomenal. And when they haven't won it, they've been knocked out in semi-finals. I mean, it's just ridiculous how far they get and how successful they are. And they've just got this way to win and a will to win in this competition. So, yes, City will be favourites, um, but still, they're going to have to come across and overcome one of the greatest teams.